I'd like to discuss a few points about um, the editor's companion chapter two by Steve uh, Dunham and hopefully you will find this material useful in your uh, final project. There are two sections of the chapter that we've already touched on in this course in other ways and so I'm not going to pay too much attention to them. One of them is a discussion on plain language on page 33. We have already talked about this in terms of readability statistics and how to uh, reduce or um, increase the sophistication and difficulty of our syntactical patterns in our vocabulary. The other uh, thing that uh, Dunham discusses here is jargon. There, We've already had a discussion about that, but my intention is to um, revisit that a little bit and, and retool it, help shape it for you, so that, again, you can apply this to your editorial solutions for assignment three. So number one, uh, the first point is, as Dunham says, each market by which we understand audience or demographic has readers and users with shared interests. He says this on page 23. I, Pellucci would add, not only shared interests, but shared values, beliefs, anxieties, strengths, deficiencies. Individuals who come to a computer help file for assistance are looking usually uh, in a hurry for something so uh, because it's a uh, temporary distraction from their work and they need to get the information and get out so whatever you set up has to be very clear and simple for them to access but there and so you can assume that your any of your users are in a hurry and need to get stuff fast um, <clears throat> secondly that they may not understand the concept of what information you're giving them, what that concept really is. Um, number two, uh, many books fall short, says uh, Dunham in the supplemental material. They, they provide photos, maps, appendices, tables, and so on. So you do have to be aware that the more visual material, not the more visual material you present, but you should certainly be enhancing your text with visuals. One of the things to keep in mind is you want the visuals to be large enough to see uh, and clear enough, but you don't want to crowd the documents so that there's not enough white space, and you don't want to make the um, the screen captures of the video so large that, that um, you waste a whole screen on it. It should be available for the user to uh, enlarge if they want uh, or keep it at that size. Editors, <coughs> so I've got to edit my own work. Uh, must include not only the appropriate level of detail, but also the reading ability of the reader. So we've addressed that in a number of ways, uh, gestalt information architecture, taxonomies, hide reveal, um, at a, the top level, secondary and tertiary levels. These are all very important um, designations that you have to make uh, when you, sorry, um, when you are deciding how important or second important or third important your content is. The big discussion on jargon starts on page 27 following. Here are the couple of points that you need to remember. Jargon, like any other vocabulary, should aid communication. That's its primary purpose. It is intended to be a shortcut for people who have expertise so they don't have to use big long circumlocutions to make the point. But while jargon does that, and again, I talked about this in lecture, it also uh, becomes, as he says here, a verbal secret handshake that excludes people. So you have to find a way to take the jargon away from your novice reader especially, but also um, not to protect them from it, because in fact, once they become accustomed to that tool or that particular function in the tool, the jargon is going to be helpful for them to find other things. Your solution has to do a number of things. Uh, this is in the light of what Dunham is saying in Chapter 2. You want to help them understand the concept behind what they came to find out. This is called deep learning. And um, it means that you, it's like mathematics, you know, when you're learning mathematics in high school, you can memorize the formula, but if you don't understand conceptually what the formula does or how it works, all it takes is one little missing piece and you're lost. That was uh, <clears throat> the case for me in, uh, in grade 11 geometry. 
I would understand the theorem, theorems absolutely correct, correctly and have be very clear and I'd go to solve a problem and there would be a missing component uh, that would not allow me to apply the theory uh, only because I had to find that missing component another way. So deep learning um, it goes beyond memory and it helps the user really understand what this function is and why they need it. Still, uh, in spite of that deep learning, you still need to give them ways to remember. So mnemonics is one way, uh, little tricks of memory that will help them hang on to things, or acronyms are very useful as well, but acronyms become jargon. So for example, um, for musicians out there, who are trying to read the, um, the lines um, on the uh, treble clef, they're E, uh, G, B, D, F. And it's hard to remember that unless you remember every good boy deserves fun. And once you have that acronym, uh, it becomes much easier to remember the sequence of things. So um, the corollary to all of this is in your help file, you're not just giving them information to solve their immediate problem. That is, of course, your primary purpose, and you cannot hide that. You have to give them that information very quickly. But also, think of this as a teachable moment that will educate them on why this concept is so important, why the functionality in the software is so necessary and so useful to them, and also to prepare them to some extent that uh, when they come back the next time or the time after, they don't need to go to the beginner section, they can go right to the advanced section. So, um, moving beyond Dunham, this is a set of my recommendations to you. Um, you should begin by gathering all your content first, writing it up, getting all your screen captures, just gather everything together and don't pay much attention to hierarchy or primary, secondary, tertiary. Once you've got all of your information, then you need to designate it. You can do that however which way you want. Uh, you could go through your document and use color coding or uh, braces, brackets, and chevrons to delineate things or P, S, and T. But clearly go through your content and be very clear in your own mind what is top level primary and what is secondary and what is tertiary. If the concept or the help is relatively simple, you may not need the tertiary points. Primary and secondary may be enough. Once you have all of that laid out and you know what has to be on the top level and what has to be hidden, you can use things like hide reveal, two tooltips, mouse overs, hyperlinks, uh, gestalt, uh, rule of six, all kinds of tricks in heuristics and interface design that we talked about to ensure that that top level doesn't become too overloaded. This next point is very important. Give priority to user empowerment, not designer expertise. There's two things that have to come into play here. Number one, you have to allow your users to follow your recommended trajectory through the content. After all, you are a um, alleged expert in this field or you're working with content from an expert. Um, and so there's clearly a better way and a worse way to move through the content, given especially that you're trying to educate your user using deep learning and to make this a teachable moment as much as a help file moment, you want to be able to recommend a pathway through the content, and that's fine. But it's also about user empowerment. That is to say, you have to allow the user to skip around the text as they see fit, including jumping back or ahead, or even way ahead to the expert section, and they should be able to move from wherever they are to anywhere else in no more than two clicks, because that is the two-click rule. This method of presenting information is called ergodic, and I can't remember if I discussed it in lecture or not, so I am going to do a separate little talk on ergodic text. Um, but basically means like the root of a tree uh, and nonlinear, so you can move down every node um, and every pathway and, and navigate this thing in any sequence that you want. 
And it's this ergodic nature of hypertext and moving around that really allows reading and comprehension and defines reading and comprehension in our modern digital world. So keep those things in mind. Look out for a short little video on ergodic text or um, um, a write-up on it. I will uh, do that uh, soon and um, uh, make it available to you.